like that, I feel like. So, Matt, you own the ACR. Yeah. Um, Nate, you got the SCAR. And Matt, you actually have a, you have a SCAR too, you have a 308 SCAR. Yeah, right? I have a SCAR 17. So, um, my SCAR 17 is kind of a fluke though, so I'm not gonna use right. that as a comparison. So, we just kinda wanna look at these at the bench, um, and you said you're a little bit partial to the ACR, so elaborate. All right, so my my first argument over the for the ACR over the SCAR 16 is a lot of the stock, a lot of things that come stock on your ACR are upgrades that are for your ACR. Uh, like I think KRG makes, um, you know, a stock that is exactly this, and this comes stock if you get the foldable stock. Um, and then while we're saying that a lot of the stuff that comes factor in the ACR are upgrades for the SCAR. Exactly. Okay. I got you. Um, so, and then with that being said, the just the durability on the folding stock on the ACR is a lot tougher and heavier duty. Like you can do this all day long with these and it won't break. Uh, with a SCAR, they're a lot stickier. And then, you know, I wouldn't wanna, plus it's not mine, but you flip it open and it, you know, usually they kind of just do this and they're, they're just not as built. And then, you know, another upgrade is um, like an aluminum catch. You can upgrade this button because uh, they're so flimsy. Um, and I've seen some guys break those actually running and gun in those. Um, next point is your charging handle. Stock uh, SCAR charging handle is straight, so it just sticks out like here. So if you're just using this, you know, that catches right on your uh, whatever optic you're running or whatever. So again, you have to upgrade it to get one that's canted down. Like you have right here, which is, what is that, Nate? It's a KDG. KDG? Kinetic Development Group. Okay, cool. Uh, you know, on ACR, uh, come standard. So it's already down and doesn't get in the way. Also, doesn't reciprocate. So when you right. shoot, if you're if you're a guy who does this or just whatever you're doing, it's just nice not having moving parts when, when you're trying to shoot. Right. Which uh, I have had stoppages when I grab the magwell and my thumb hits this. You know, like it won't. So you gotta keep your hand in front of yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, and it's not, cause see, and then even if you look at the travel path of your bolt, you know, on the ACR, it's up and forward, which is, it's just easier when you're up and running the gun. It's just right here, you know, it's right in your workspace. You don't, as compared to the ACR, or I'm sorry, the SCAR, it feels a lot more cramped. Like, yeah, you could argue that it's further into your workspace, but to me, it just feels a lot more congested. And also, it, it's more likely to ride, even when it's straight, it's more likely to ride, one, in the travel path where you're mounting your optic, and then two, where you're gonna grab it. As with the ACR, that's not even a problem because pretty rare that you're going to mount an optic this far forward to where it even be right in the in the path of your charging handle you know uh as for the controls the controls are really well thought out uh in my opinion uh my only gripe about the controls on the acr is the ambidextrous uh safety it can feels a little flimsy um it's probably the only like the flimsiest part on the whole rifle and if you um try and manipulate the selector switch with your finger along the receiver it can hit but i mean realistically anytime you're moving it from from safe to fire your finger's probably going to be down here and it's out of the way so you know unless you're a guy who puts it on fire and then down might feel a little goofy uh the bolt release is actually right here so it's very reminiscent like if you're used to running a what are they called a bad lever yeah you can put on there yep. um you know that's how you work your bolt i remember that the first time i shot this so that was that was one of the things i noted that it was it's nice that they incorporated that yeah and even if you're not used to running this is pretty intuitive you pick up a you pick up a mag and pick up this gun you're just gonna figure out what that is pretty quick you know you gas it up hit that button and you're ready to go to town uh ambidextrous uh magazine release which i understand the, the scar also has um which actually i'll, I'll get points to the scar that it's actually pretty it's pretty oversized in my opinion and it's pretty easy to find on either side of the scar. Um, bolt release is just like a regular AR-15 bolt release, which, you know, if you're used to running that, which everyone probably is, it's not a problem. Some guys, I've heard people knock on the ACR because, well, you have to retrain and but like I said, it's pretty intuitive. You pick this up. Right, I I went, uh, you know, never shooting an ACR to holding that the first time and mm -hmm. I didn't really, the only thing that I think is is re is weird from the AR is, is just where the charging handle placement is. Um, but that's the same on the SCAR as yeah. far as placement goes, more or less. Exactly. I thought everything felt pretty normal like an AR. Yeah. And then, you know, the pistol grip on the SCAR is just a standard 
regular A2 standard run the mill plain Jane uh, is that pistol grip. Nate, you had an A2 flat dark earth pistol grip. Yep. Really? Yeah. That's weird. So you have to upgrade it, and usually you have to. You can't just take a regular AR15 pistol grip and put it on here. You know, you either have to have somebody like you. Would you say Nate? This was a Parker, Parker machine. machine. Yeah. Uh, which are the same guys that did my 17, which was they do they do awesome work and they're worth the price. Obviously, they're a little bit more because they have to get machine down to right. to that and not look like shit so they do a good job you um, don't have option the the pistol grips machine into the lower it, it is so this is this is all polymer so we'll actually just go ahead because we can move into my next segment points so how you take this like down there's need to make a powerpoint for me right um <laughs> so there's three takedown pins and sell it and them. again like yeah. you could if you're used to an ar like this comes pretty much part the fire control group is pretty reminiscent of an ar-15 and the stock trigger on these uh, is really nice. Like I would say it's probably really reminiscent of a Spikes tactical or a uh, trigger or, like an um, ACT or something. yeah, it, it feels, like it's, a, it's a step up. It's okay. not a stock trigger. Um, Nate, you got the, the super scar? Yep, Geisley mm -hmm. super scar. Yeah, super scar. so come upgrade. stock. Upgrade. Yeah. yeah, so <laughs> everything's an upgrade on your gun. Yeah, so come stock, you know what? 300 280 something i i got Probably. mine on my 17 on a black friday sale and i think it was like 243 dollars okay. was like an absurd amount off so um so yeah so your lower is is polymer which some guys don't like but you know it's uh it's the same on the scar too so that i don't think it's really so no difference there yeah no difference as for the pistol grip uh yeah it's, it's welded right in there but one that's one less point that you have to worry about to come loose um and who i mean i would argue to find somebody who wouldn't like this because it's it's kind of fit for everybody like it's not crazy but it's also well thought it's out it's like a magpul moe almost it is I and mean, actually it's it's magpuls because i think i got a hybrid of when bushmaster got it from magpul it, they have a lot of nods magpul on here like there's a lot of magpul oh, yeah. uh emblems on here so, so it, it's very much like an, a magpul pistol show that base plate again on the stock folded and then, oh, you got a battery compartment oh, cool. in there, which I can't remember if that has their on there or not. Um, I mean, I don't ever use it for batteries, but it's good for, I don't know, friggin' Skittles or something like that. m &Ms. Yeah. Skittles probably won't go, um, so I'll give you the, give you oh, the one. Oh, uh, sling, sling attach points. Like, yeah, your scar's got places for your, your HK style hooks, or you could run a, you know, whatever you could figure out. I think the... The mounting points on the ACR, I feel like, are a little bit more thought out. You have this big, nice, oversized latch. And this thing, you can just look at it. Like, you could probably tow a truck with that mount. <laughs> um, and then you have two uh, QD options up here for if you're a guy who likes to run it out far or in between. And then you also have one on the stock. And then you even have a loop for a, a standard uh, sling if you want. So, and your to me, stock doesn't look like an Ugg boot? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so to me, that's just. But Nate, you you said you you have one of the KDG stocks. I do, and I, you I, like the stock one a little bit better. I like the cheek weld. Okay, the cheek on the weld on this guy. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, this doesn't. This like this is as high as this comes up. Um, like that's that's riser. as that's as low as it goes, and then that's as high as it goes. But depending on the optic that you're running, I feel like this is about as much you you really need. Like, yeah, it's a little low, but it's in my opinion, it's better than nothing. So, so basically what you're saying is from an ergonomics and function standpoint, taking out like parts availability, cost, politics, everything, you prefer the ACR. Yeah. And then when you look at the starting point and now that these have been out for a while and then they got kind of tossed to the side. Right. Because the ACR is pretty much in the garbage can. Yeah. Like you can't, they're not making them right. There's, you can't even hardly no, find them anymore. Well, they're right? actually, they're kind of coming back. Uh, Are it's, they? it's kind of weird. Like they, Bushmaster's marking like this thing has been out forever, which it has been, but they stopped making them or. They dropped off the market. Now you can find them around. They're like six hundred bucks. Uh, now they're coming out with a DMR version, so it has an eighteen-inch barrel. And actually, let's talk about the barrel. Remember that was a big selling point. They they were talking about swappable barrels. Yeah, like like quick swappable barrels. Um, so right. if anyone so if anyone's ever ran like a, it's almost really reminiscent of like a machine gun, right? Uh, barrel on how you take it off. So you take out your let's take out our bolt or pull it to the rear here. Um, you can swap which side and what orientation you want to run your charging handle. Oh, so there's a, it's kind of a pain in the ass sometimes, but there's a button right here. So you could take like a tip of a bullet. Actually, we'll just do that. I remember it kind of being goofy. I haven't really messed with this too often. You push back on that. 
and then yeah, it just comes right out. Comes right out. Cool. So you can put it on. It, so I was a little disappointed that it's not like Call of Duty and it's not on both sides all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but you can flip what side of the gun you want to run it on, or if you want to run it down, which I think is a smart way. So like I said, you're not running your optic, oh, or you can run it up so you feel like you're getting a faster purchase on Interesting. it. Interesting. Which way does it come from the factory? Uh, from the factory, it, it came down. And you can also change, like, what face you want. Like, you know, if you want it this way, you can run it that way, you know. Neat. So. I uh, did not know that. Yes. Um, for bolt out. Which, and then there's a catch here. Oh, helps if I take the takedown pin out of the way. So here's your old bolt group. Um, which, compared to, like, an ACR or a, a SCAR. I get those mixed up. Um... You know, it's just, to me, this is just an easier, simpler, it's easier to field strip. You know, this is your chunk. Compared to the SCAR, you have this big, oversized, you know, like, this is all your bolt right here. You know, this whole thing comes out. Okay. That's your whole assembly. I mean, is that really a point for anything? No, but it's just something that I like to... Right, you know, so like, show, the, show the barrel. Yeah, so how this thing comes out. So here's your, here's your torque lever, right? Uh, so then there's this detent right here. So you just push on that. And then turn my turn the right way. I'm trying to keep it off my, my cog. Yeah. So you just and then there's these locking lugs right here. So that's actually what locks it into the barrel. When you wind those up and torque it, and then this barrel, the whole assembly, just comes right off. So unlike ARs where you like, you know, guys who are like, oh I have a you know, my AR is multi cal because I have a 300 block out upper, a six point eight right. upper. You could just swap these out and if you were you know if you wanted a, a plinker carbine coyote barrel you know you got your 16 incher if you want to rock the dmr package you just get an 18 incher and then your gas regulator this thing suppressed i mean grant i've only run it canned once but it was a it was a beaut it doesn't over gas whatsoever it was fun that was really fun yeah uh you then have you a, have that switch up there with the gas the piston too yeah so you have your you have one on the scar too though mm -hmm. it does yeah. but um just the usability and like how you look at this is more intuitive so like the u Usually mm -hmm. most guys who play Call of Duty or whatever probably think, oh, that's unsuppressed. Then you just press that button, turn it 180 degrees. Now you're suppressed and now you're venting off a good portion of your... How is the SCAR set up on the gas piston? So on the SCAR, um, I mean, it's still easy to get to. So it's just underneath your, your front side post. And then I've never been able to move mine very well, but you got to press, get that down and then push it. Okay. So, oh, actually his move's pretty easy. So there you go. Uh, that's not as stiff as... Um, 17s, huh? Yeah, or any. Wow. All right. So cool. So yeah, not as, not as bad. Um, so as for, because on the scar, you know, like yeah, you can take off the barrel, and you, anyone who ever has mounted an aftermarket four rail system, uh, you typically do. At least with the Midwest one, I can't speak for this one or any of the other ones. But you gotta. This is what holds it in here. Are these guys? So this, these four self-captured. Uh, Island screws, hex heads, whatever you want to call them. So you take those out, they're self-captured. Barrel comes off, then there's a yoke assembly that comes off too, and it's just this big triangular chunk of metal, right? And it just fits right back here in the trunnion. So you pull that off, and then you got to have make sure you have it torqued down right. Because um, obviously if you don't have it torqued to spec, and I think it's like 70-ish, 68 pounds-ish, you know? That's something, you know, the torque spec on your barrel isn't something you want to mess with. Right. Um, so you can, sure. it's it's harder to do out in the field as with this. Like I said, you can almost just carry spare barrels in case you get one too hot. So the ACR is just a little bit more user friendly as far as that kind of aspect goes. Seems yeah, like. in my opinion, and they're like just the cut. Like, I mean, you tore this thing down in like sixty seconds. Like this <laughs> thing's parts in sixty seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if if you were to do it all the time. When, when from, he took the barrel out, of that, that's what impressed me because I'm like, right. oh, you need tools for the scar. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it changes out like a friggin' uh, LMG barrel for crying out loud. When uh, did you pick this up? This ACR. What year? Do you remember? It was like right when they were really popular because I paid way too much for it. Did you? Um, so I picked up mine, I would say probably 2012 maybe. Okay. Because uh, I, I got mine right at the height of the popularity of them. This is an aftermarket muzzle device, right? Yes. So what does it come with? Do you remember? It Mine came with a Vortex uh, flash hider. So it's actually pretty much like this. Oh, it's a Smith Vortex? Or, yeah. Or Smith Vortex style at least? Yeah. Okay. So it was pretty much the same. And what as... does the, the SCAR come with? A factory, do you remember? Uh, PWS. PWS uh, muzzle brake? Yeah. Primer okay. Weapons. Yep. Okay. So it actually, so that's a point because even on my 17, the recoil, for especially for as light as this is, and I'll, that's one thing I'll give to the SCAR is the SCAR actually weighs less than the yeah. ACR. Like when you look at this, you're like, oh, it's modular, but the front end on this, is a friggin' tank. 
Okay. Um, hence why I usually have a bipod on this, to be Probably honest. Probably have less fellow recoil, too, for the heavier weight. Yeah. Now, there's aftermarket. Um, now, some companies have messed with, like, making aftermarket four-end systems to lighten it up and do some other stuff. But now that there's the market's dried up, um, they're insanely expensive. Like, we're talking, like, four or $500 for okay. a key mold one of these. Oh, wow. So, uh, not really worth it in my book. Do you mind? Yeah. So, but, I mean, if I feel like if guys started buying these, the market came back. Especially, like I said, now that they're, they're out and around and... They've kind of died off the popularity mm -hmm. on them. They're like sixteen hundred bucks compared to like really? when they first came out. We're talking like twenty five hundred. So when and it comes to like replacing parts, say you broke something, what what's more expensive? What's harder to find, ACR or SCAR? I would say definitely ACR. Really? Just because there's not a market for ACR. Okay. Um, the SCAR, it's it's around everywhere, you know. But the thing is, like the SCAR is also. Cause it, I mean, just out of the box, it's a little bit more, you know, like your, your scar 16s are probably about what I paid for this, you know, okay. so realistic. And then if you got a scar 17, that's, you know, you're, you're bucking almost, uh, three the scar, the scar 17s, so I should say 16, sorry, run around three K. I paid 2,500. For yeah. That's, and that's like a good price, right? Yeah. Like a real good price. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually exactly on the dot what okay. I paid for my ACR in 2012. Okay. But that's that's stock, of course. Yeah. And you add up the upgrades. Yeah. Yeah. Upgrade. So to, so yeah. the only aftermarket parts I have on this are obviously my ACOG and mount, and um, the uh, muzzle device. But that's just so when I ever get my suppressor, friggin' if ATF ever decides to file my 41, we're going on a year now. Um, <laughs> then I could put it on here. But it came with a, a vortex. Now I've seen some that come with like an A2 birch cage. Okay. So I think it's pretty dependent on what one you get. So um, you may have mentioned this. I can't remember. So you can actually find the aftermarket barrels now on the ACR? I think so. Like they're just coming out. Like I saw some dude on YouTube. What's the too. cost of them? I have no idea. Really? To be honest. I'm sure they're probably going to be up there a little bit. Probably. Because they're, they're pretty unique. Because so, so. the SCAR barrels aren't cheap either. No. Because see, with the, the problem I'm having with my SCAR 17 is it's not grouping. Uh, so FN, if FN would ever decide to fix mine when I send it to them and not send it back to me with a friggin' four inch grouping. In right, right. Yards, um, with match ammo? Yeah, with match ammo, supposedly. Uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, uh, part, barrel oh, cost. barrels. The barrels on a SCAR, because otherwise I just, I think it, yeah. <laughs> Um, Because otherwise I think it's the barrel. You know, I would just get a different barrel, but a barrel for a SCAR 17, and I'm sure they're probably the same for a 16, they're like 1200 bucks. Okay. Whether, whether you went from, and then there's not, not that I've been able to find, you can't just buy a, another 16 inch barrel. Like you're either stuck with uh, 18 or 20 or 14. Right. Or 10 or like so you're either going super rifle length or sbr and you know 1200 dollars. i mean shit that's a third of the cost of the rifle so color wise i gotta say though the scar has got the browns going on like look at all those browns 50 shades there's like FD. yeah 50, yeah 50, 50 shades of there. and then you've got the the razor on there which even makes it even better <laughs> you need you need the a brown um the light control system cloud defensive on there yeah and nice. you got another brown I'm telling you all the browns but yeah cool um yeah because it's just stock now the thing i'll say about mine but i think it might be a earlier one the silicone job isn't very good like on my upper um like this just bubbled off yep on mine and then just See. kind of an engineering oversight when i first got this if you um when you have it the bolt locked to the rear and you send it home this cutout actually was shorter than what it would come so when it would uh, go into battery so your my the charging handle would hit up against here okay so that's where that this I came see from that. yeah um so there's there's stuff like that to because obviously you don't see it on the other side because i never ran right. over there um so there's stuff like that that's just kind of like a huh like why didn't you figure that out but otherwise there's a whole package especially for what they're going for now i think it's kind of silly i mean shit guys spend more way more than that on just uh they get a dpms or a rock river or or something and then they throw all this the cool guy stuff into it to make it kind of like this when you could just spend it bulk and get a lot of the, the stuff that a lot of guys want out of a rifle anyway. And plus you have something that's not an AR-15. Right. You know. I, I remember back in the day um, when these were getting popular, I remember I was looking for a mil-spec version. And I, I remember that they made one uh, and it had the upgraded barrel, which is chrome line. Um, and they, they lightened things up a little bit. I want to say they maybe, maybe even... Uh, killed the folding stock or something just, yeah, just to reduce this, weight on the ACR because exactly. like, you, like you said the ACR was a bit heavy and I remember I got excited because I was hoping they would release that to the, the public but they never did yeah and it kind of just died off from there but but anyway I'm running low on battery and so 
final summary, just wrap up. What are your final thoughts on the two? Uh, basically, owning two in one way or another. Yeah. And then Nate, if you want to jump in too, you can. You can. You can talk shit about the ACR. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's yeah, kind of like baby like, poop, but other than it that. does look like baby <laughs> yeah. poop a little bit. You're right, you're right. But you haven't shot it yet, right? No, I. So maybe we'll we'll get them out. We'll shoot them both side by side. I've shot them both, um, and maybe we'll shoot them side by side tomorrow and do another vid. But yeah, I say being a strictly an AR guy like myself, um, it's pretty easy going to both. Like the only difference is the charting handle placement for the most part. Yeah. Everything else is added or integrated to work better, and just a little bit of training is gonna is gonna you know, help you out. So any, any final thoughts? I mean, I think if people just start buying the ACR and we're like, if they got in their hands and we're like, oh, this is actually pretty legit, then I think the market would come back for it. And honestly, I think the biggest problem that the way that this handle was rifled was not for, or the, just with the marketing of it was not very good. And honestly, I feel like if they would have made a 308 version to compete with the SCAR 17, because that was the biggest thing that the SCAR family had is it had the light family and the heavy family. This right. was just the multi-cal functionality that never got right. bought out. And all that would have been is just new barrels and different bolt faces. Well, the interesting thing right. is like, it's the same thing with Desert Tech, is Desert Tech has that like platform and more of a precision bolt mm -hmm. and it just doesn't take off. And I don't know why, because I mean, typically you find people that want, generally speaking, you find people that want more guns, not, you know, they don't want to spend. They don't want to spend three, four, or five thousand dollars on one gun. They want to spend a thousand dollars and have five guns. Yeah. And that's just typically what you see. It's, well, yeah, and that's and that's kind of the American way because people just are American. They want a, yeah. a room full of guns. I get that, and I'm I'm a little bit that way too, because uh, I don't do the whole like buy a different upper for every caliber. But uh, I think for something like this, it just has the appeal of, because it just looks cool. It's because it's not AR-15. Any caliber, you know, like it'd be probably appealing to run this in two two three, and seven six two by thirty nine. Just because uh, they're really cheap ammo, like 7.62 right. by 39, you can buy for well, the mag. The mag would be the problem there. Yeah, really, that'd I mean, be the only issue. Um, 300 Bush, blackout, problem solved. Yeah, I think Bushmaster. They did have some sort of. It's kind of like what uh, what is it? CCM machine or CMC machine or CMMG whatever. Or whatever. Yeah, for their mutant uh, uh, air, AK AR-15 hybrid thing. You just get a weird, goofy looking, and it fit in the mag well. You just um, right. feed the lip in the fall. Yeah, they, they don't feed with a crap, though. I don't oh, they? don't they? I've never the, messed the, with you're one talking about the 760 by 39 that curves real hard. Yeah, 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 they don't feed very well. Okay. So, but there's, I mean, there's definitely potential. You gotta step up your light game, though. To me, to me, Nate's scar light game. <laughs> yeah. And more browns. Yeah, more browns. Actually, it's come to think of that, you're lower and your upper are different colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. I mean that's something that never really got me. Yep. I don't, yeah, I don't care at all. I think it looks cool. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't care. aesthetics wise. I'm just talking the sure for the, for the hell of it. I mean, there's fun. some that almost like a little greenish. Yep. Um, because yeah, but at the at the end of the day, it's kind of like, uh, I mean, you're talking about two different materials. So, at a factory setting, I feel like it's kind of hard to get those the same. Right. And then also, who really cares? Cool. That's kind of my other point. We'll shoot them and have fun and. The color looks back. like they had. Flat dark earth and OD green left, and they just was like, eh, I'll just dump it all together. Yeah, we'll talk more about this one later. All right. Yeah, we gotta roll. Yep.